right folks it's a rainy messy snowy day today outside and I've got a special project in store today I'm going to make a couple of mirrors and this project was inspired by one of my special YouTube subscribers who inquired about this process and they really wanted me to make a video so if you're a special subscriber you can make me do things so that's why I'm building these mirrors today and I'm going to do a more instructional type video showing step by step and explaining what I'm doing as I'm building it so that you can learn this process. I've built several of this same size mirror. This one is going to be wrapped in zinc and this is the zinc which is actually galvanized steel flashing which is more economical so I buy this roll at Home Depot. This costs about ten dollars, and I need two to make the parts for this frame. And for the copper frame, this is actually a lot smaller in size, and I designed it around some scrap material that I had laying around the shop. And these are cutoffs from other previous countertop jobs. So I'm making good use of some scrap material, and the substrate is going to also be made out of scrap. These are cutoffs from other jobs. The main part of the frame is going to be Advantech. And I explained why I use this material for stability and gluing on the metal. Um, the edging, I'll use some plywood scrap. I use pine for the internal frame members, for the spacers, and for the hanging cleats. And this is half inch plywood that I also use as a spacer and this is quarter inch Luon and I use this material as a backer for all the mirrors that I build and yeah, there's two main reasons why I do it that way uh, the first reason is to protect the glass because the silver lining that goes on the back of mirror glass can be scuffed if it gets bumped so the quarter inch backer protects the glass and it also lends a lot to structural support for the frame because it ties all of these frame members together and that increases its load capacity and what you can hang on the wall so I always build mirrors with the quarter inch solid backer it's an extra part but it I think in the long run if you ever have to transport one of these yourself it's nice to have that protection and for hanging the mirrors I always do a French cleat mounting system and that involves a hanging cleat with a 45 degree bevel rip like this and so this would hang up against the wall and the mirror would kind of sit on top of that and wedge itself against the wall at the same time and it's a very easy way to install the mirror. It's much better than the wire mounts or the hanging brackets, those little metal clips. So I always do the, the French mount system, and I do the 45 cleat around the entire inside perimeter of the frame. So you can hang the frame horizontal, vertical, or any which way uh, for more versatility. So the process of making these mirrors with the wrapped metal frames is not easy. It actually has to happen in incremental steps um, because I have to glue these inside edges first and then you know, form and clamp each one of these leaves individually as I wrap it around the frame. So it's fairly tedious. Um, it's not something that you can just do in one day or do you know continuously um, but I'll show my process here hopefully it will make sense and you can make these yourself if you want to they make nice gifts I kinda of developed a process that makes them you know look really clean and look really neat but there's a lot of labor involved with it it takes up a lot of space in the shop when I do it and I don't particularly enjoy working with uh, sharp metal and difficult maneuvers <laughs> if you can make one of these without cutting yourself you know you're a pro so
Okay, so at this point I have the main part of the frame together and I need to do this step first so that I get the outside dimensions so I can start cutting my filler strips, my hanger strips, and my outer edging. So this is the Advantec and I have it joined together with the pocket hole screws and polyurethane construction adhesive and I'll be using this glue to bond the metal to the substrate. I also use the liquid formula polyurethane glue interchangeably. This might be a little bit faster to apply for some of the uh, smaller filler strips. So that's where I'm at right now.
Okay, this is day two of the mirror project, and I just want to note the reason why I paint this inside edge where the glass is installed is because there's a quarter inch difference between the face of the glass and the back of that f reflective silver lining and that will reflect a little strip of wood where the recess is where that glass is installed and if that's bare wood it'll be distracting so by painting it black it just blends in that little area um, I do have to touch up some areas there's a I don't know if you can see that, but like some really rough raised grain there. I'm just going to sand that down and touch up some spots. And then I'm just going to do a quick sand on the face here just to get the glue. And if there's any areas that are protruding from the surface, I just like to get that as flat as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a substrate to be uh, wrapped with metal, but... It can be distracting if there's like a corner sticking out. So I just like to do a quick sand on that and then these will be ready to go. But in the meantime, I'm gonna just get that touch up done and then I'll start uh, preparing the metal and just cutting it to size. 